Hi, and welcome to my Mark II PV controller on video, as recently posted on the Open Energy Monitor forum. Um, here it is. Um, it's got the Arduino, it's got the input circuits on breadboard. Uh, the triac is now standing up and uh, used to be lying down. The sun's gone behind some clouds. Um, it's not as hot as it was earlier. It's heated up a full tank of water already uh, today. It's about midday. Um, and the only other component is the mains transformer. And rather than using um, the one which I had before, which is a standard sort of um, telecom thing, which just happened to have, a, have an AC output, um, I've wired it up with this beast to see if it makes any difference. I'm not sure whether it does, but that's a, a separate issue. Um, the reason that I've put the light on is because um, the thermostat has already tripped out, so any surplus power is simply going off to the mains. If I want to see what's going on, um, I need to put something on that circuit, so I've just patched that in. Uh, the reason I'm taking this particular video now is that somebody on the forum has just asked a very reasonable question. Can the triac, which is here, and the trigger that goes with it, can they be on the um, cold side of the mains as opposed to the hot side? And according to the specification they can, I've never tried it, so always happy to give these things a go. So the triac switches the two connections together in here, the orange wire goes up to the box on the wall, and the box on the wall simply connects the left-hand twin and earth which comes from the consumer unit to the right-hand twin and earth which goes up to the immersion. And at the moment, um, the two wires here are in the neutral side as opposed to on the live side. So the two lives join together there. The two ne neutrals um, come together via the triac. And I've patched in um, this here. So that's going between live switch neutral and earth and the light is showing me what's going on. So at the moment we're getting, uh, let's have a look, a thousand watts from the PV. We're exporting. Um, I've got a, a lead uh, on, on there just to see what's going on but it's not doing anything active in the sketch at the moment. We're exporting, generating um, a kilowatt of power. Um, the probably won't come out on the camera but the LED, the little yellow D LED on the Arduino is on which shows that the Arduino is putting out the triac is hard on which is why the light is um, in that state. So on the same circuit as the light is I've got a two kilowatt heater and if I put um, a little bit of power on um, so if I put the top one on that's going to be 1200 watts which is probably going to be too much and sure enough the light starts to dim. So um, that's telling me that the triac is having to uh, distribute power less than fully because otherwise we'd be overloading ourselves and as you can see we're still exporting. So if I put on a bit more power, put on two kilowatts of nominal power. Okay now you'd expect you can see the flashing down there so that we're drawing something less than two kilowatts because there isn't two kilowatts available because we've only got 1046 uh, watts of PV power um, so the house is going to be taking a little bit so there's going to be something like 800 watts of power uh, available which is going into the heater going into the bulb but it's we're still exporting and if I were to go down the other end of the garage to where my trusty Bosch um, hot air gun is, if I put that onto half power, this is actually um, a, of dubious construction because it's only actually activating um, alternate half cycles. So if we switch it on, as you can see, the combination of the load of the, heat of the immersion heater and the bulb and this. So this is on a different circuit to the um, resistive heater. This is just load in the house. If I switch that up a bit more, now the full power of the Bosch, which is 1500 watts, is exceeding the PV, so we're not, we haven't got any cycles available. If I put it down to half power, we've now got 750 watts or thereabouts of Bosch power. A uh, couple of hundred watts for the house, that's getting on for a thousand. There's a little bit more than a thousand of PV, so a small amount of power 
is being sent out um, by the, the, the track. Now if I leave that on that setting there and turn the resistive heater down then every time the triac fires there will be less power drawn so it should um, switch more frequently. So we can probably see the light flashing away. I'm not sure whether we can. There's the light flashing away. So at the moment we've got two, we've got a two kilowatt load. So if I drop that down to um, knock off 750, so it's now a 1250 watt load. Let's look at the light while I do it. Okay, so we've only got a 1250 watt load now. Only the upper one is flashing, and the light is on more often. If I now go for a 750 watt load and put the other one off, so we've got 750 watts load from the resistive heater, and that bulb should be on not far off constant because we've got oh, we've got up a bit now. You see, we've got 1250 watts of PV power. This thing trying to take 750, that thing trying to take 100, so it's flashing most of the time. Now. Interestingly, doesn't this always happen when you're videoing? I wasn't expecting this light to be off. I haven't deliberately put in any bias towards export, but the light always seems to be on. Now, I would expect that I could stand here for a good long time and wouldn't see any flicks, but uh, who knows? Um, really, the only way to detect whether the meter pulses are coming is to link meter pulses into the algorithm and that's what that uh, LED, uh, sorry, LDR is for. So suitably modified the algorithm would um, allow pulses to be detected and if while you're allocating power with the triac on the basis of spare power you were to find a flash from the uh, meter that would mean that your measurement system is out of sync with the uh, meter and you better do something about it because every time you get a pulse um, you're being charged for. So while I'm rambling away here um, we've now gone up to 1400 watts you can see 1400 watts of PV so the load the fixed load is the same so I've got my 750 watts from there um, this resistive meter this resistive heater is acting like an immersion and as you can see is flashing at a rate that's variable dependent on the conditions um, I'm having some strobe effects here, but um, the light the, the light is changing its flick rate according to the uh, weather conditions. Now the reason that the light is so responsive is that I've got this energy bucket concept whereby I have a nominal um, energy bucket of one watt hours worth about 3,600 joules and I simply um, dump energy into it as measured through the current clamp and the standard technology but I do so once every main cycle so every main cycle it gets updated and depending on what the level of this energy bucket in the software is so the triac is either switched on or not and the responsive is pretty immediate if I switch this off you'll hear the click and you'll see the response <laughs> it's pretty good isn't it now when I switch it on it will be a little bit slower because the energy bucket is now filled up to the top it's filled up to a fill up to a, a nominal level of 3600 it'll take a fraction of a second half a second maybe maybe a bit longer for the Bosch to work its way down through that until power needs to be rationed so here we go it's going on okay so the response is appears to be slow on the startup because it's got to work its way through 1800 watts of power before the rationing starts. If I were to put the power on full you would see the rate of flicker change instantly. Okay. Now if I switch it back off again it will take a little while to build up to get back to 1800. Don't know what's happened there. I will turn it off completely. Well, isn't that strange? Let's do that again. So, going on to half power. I think what's happened is the 
level of um, illumination outside has changed. So we're now in sitting at 1800 watts. Um, if I put full power on and then pull power off, it ought to come back up to the same level as it was before. If it doesn't, I don't know what's going on. Perhaps we just have to wait a while. There we go. So it's taking quite a while. Yes, that makes sense. It's taking quite a while to come up to 1800 watts from zero. Let's do that again. So if I switch this off completely now, it takes a second or so to come up. But if I only switch it down to half power, then I'm reducing the ability of the system to get up to the point where it can start allocating power because I'm drawing 750 watts from it. So every second I'm taking 750 joules out of the house, which means the energy bucket is unable to build up so quickly. But eventually it will get there. But once it does, it will start allocating it at a relatively short rate. So just to look through the numbers, we've got something like 750 watts coming out of the Bosch. We're generating at 1200, so there's only 500 spare. So there might be 200, 250 being taken by the house for various purposes. So you've only got two or 300 watts spare. So to go from zero to 1800 watts is going to take several seconds. So now we've got to 1800 watts. Um, and we're just we've just got a little bit of power to uh, distribute, and you remember we've got this thing on uh, 750 watts. If I take this 750 watts off, you'll find that we've now got a much more responsive system because I've taken away the um, resistive heater. So now all the spare power is trying to be put to the immersion. The immersion is not on. The only load is 100 watts. Put on the 750. And because we've got more PV power coming in, more than sufficient for both the bulb and the hot air blower, we're not getting flashing. As soon as I put on double power, that's so much that there isn't any spare. Put it back to halfway, we should start seeing the light come back on, but it does take some time to build up. There it goes, and switch off again. So I think that's all the trials I can think of for now. It does seem to work. Uh, in answer to the question on the um, on the forum, the triad works fine on the um, on the cool side, and I have no snubber components. It's just straight as um, as per the diagram on the forum. So uh, signing out for now.